Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of March. Okay, so apologies. I know my wrap up is coming a little bit later than it usually does, but it has been a very long week. Um, but we are here, we're going to talk about all of the reading I did in March, and um, I, there, I did a lot of reading in March. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of reading in March. There are several reasons for this. One is, as I've mentioned before, I am a judge for the Vivians, which is a romance literary award. I can't tell you about any of the books that I am judging until all of the awards are final, so I am vlogging that and you will hear about all of those books in July, but I've been reading a bunch of those. I also did quite a number of reading vlogs, and for the, anybody who's new to the channel, I have a mid-month wrap-up halfway through the month where I talk about all the books I read in the first half of the month, and then at the end of the month, as we are now, um, I start by talking about all of my reading statistics. I'm kind of a stats nerd, so I like getting into all of the nitty gritty there. And then I will go through all the books that I read, starting with my DNFs, books I did not finish, my lowest rated books, moving up to my highest rated books. For any books that I talked about in my mid-month wrap up, or books that I significantly talked about in other videos, I won't go into too much detail here. I'm going to tell you the star rating. In some cases, maybe a little bit more, but that's pretty much it. So what's weird about this month is even though I read the most number of things I have ever read in a month. I actually don't have that many books to talk to you about in this wrap up because so many of them have been for other projects or books I can't talk about right now. One thing to be aware of that's a little weird for this month and coming months because I'm judging for this romance award is you might notice star ratings that don't get mentioned in the books that I talk about. There's a reason for that. Okay, let's get into the stats. So you are probably wondering, how many things did you read, Bethany? Well, <laughs> in the month of March, I read a total of 39 things. Uh, this does include some novellas, not all of these are full-length books. I read a total of 13,012 pages for an average page count of 418 pages per day. And I wanted to do a comparison because I do think it's interesting. In February, I told you I felt like I was reading more than I really wanted to be reading. In February, it was a shorter month. I read 37 things and I was reading 429 pages a day on average. So um, not too much less. And again, I think a lot of it is the judging. Looking at the numbers and how this all adds up, six of the books that I read were things that I was reading to judge for the Vivians. So you're not going to see those in this video at all. I read one manuscript for a critique. I'm only really including that in the page count. I didn't give it a star rating. And then there is one book that I read at the end of the month for a vlog project with a secret TBR that where the video is coming out in April. So you will, even though I read it in March, you're going to hear me talk about it in April. <sighs> This is, it's so much more complicated. <laughs> like, all the things I'm doing is so much more complicated. Okay, uh, let's move on. In March, I had one DNF. I read nine books by indie or self-published authors. I had two rereads. 19 of the books that I read were either ARCs or books that were sent to me for review or for judging. And this month, I did not read any translated fiction or any graphic novels. In March, I also listened to fewer audiobooks than I typically do. I think part of this is I was reading a lot more ebooks, especially in the romance category. I listened to 13 audiobooks. I apparently forgot to write down how many of those were what I termed shelf, which means that they're books where I had a physical copy on my TBR shelf and I got it off my TBR via audio. I don't have that number in front of me, but it will be somewhere over here on the statistics. In terms of where those audiobooks are coming from, this month three of them were from my library, four of them were from Scribd, one of them was from Audible. One of them was an audio review copy from NetGalley. One of them was an audio review copy from the Penguin Random House of Volumes app. Two of them were influencer review copies from Libro FM. They very kindly offer a selection of audiobooks to influencers for free every month and you can select the ones you're interested in in exchange for just mentioning where you got them. So Libro FM is always linked down below. They're a great option if you are an audiobook listener and a lot of their proceeds go to support indie bookstores, which I think is fantastic. So I had two Libro FM books this month. And then lastly, this you're not going to see on the chart because it's kind of a one-off, but I had one audio review copy from Authors Direct. This was where an indie author used this app to send me an audiobook for review. Moving on, let's talk about the age breakdown of the books I read. This month I read a lot of adult titles. 32 of the books that I read were targeted at an adult audience. 
Five of them were targeted at a YA audience and two of them were targeted at a middle grade audience. Yeah, I feel like more and more last year and this year, I still enjoy some YA and I'm starting to dip my toes a little more into middle grade, but the bulk of what I've been reading has been adult literature. Then looking at publication dates, in March the earliest publication date of a book I read was 1936. 19 of the books that I read were published prior to 2020. Then I had six 2020 releases and 12 2021 releases. I'm actually pretty happy with that ratio. I kind of like the fact that I was reading more backlist titles than I typically do. And I think part of this is I was doing a lot of reading vlogs that got me reading things that wouldn't normally sort of be on my radar, which was cool. Then looking at the author demographics of my reading this month, <laughs> It's not great. It's not one of my better months. If you look at all of the books that I read for all different reasons, 69% of my reading was by white or Caucasian authors, and I usually like to see that number closer to 50%, so it's definitely not great. It's slightly better if I take out the books that I had to read for like judging where things were assigned to me to read, then we get to 65%. Still, not great. I'm definitely going to be looking next month. I'm going to be looking to try to boost those numbers a bit, for sure feeling kind of unbalanced. In terms of LGBTQ plus authors, it's looking a little bit better. If I look at all the books that I read overall, 18% of them were written by queer authors. If I remove the books that I was assigned to read and just leave the ones that I chose to read, we're at 22%, which is actually pretty close to the 25% benchmark that I'm generally trying to hit. So not a great month in terms of what I'm aiming for with author demographics, but we will do better next month. Moving on, let's talk about genre. <laughs> Probably nobody is going to be surprised, especially given everything I just told you, that my most read genre in March was romance. 18 of the books that I read were romance, and if we're looking at subgenres, that is seven contemporary romances, five historical romances, and six speculative romances read a lot of romance this month for sure. Then I read five fantasy books, three nonfiction, two sci-fi, two mystery, two literary fiction, one contemporary fiction, one thriller, and one historical fiction. In terms of star ratings, it's kind of an interesting breakdown. This month I gave two books one star. I did not give out any one and a half stars. Four books got two stars. One book got two and a half stars. Three books got three stars five books got three and a half stars, eight books got four stars, three books got four and a half stars, ten books got five stars, and two books got six stars. And in my personal rating scale, a six star read is what I give to a favorite of the year or a favorite of all time. This month there were two books that got that rating from me. All right, last stats thing, and then we will move on. We're going to take a look at how I'm doing with some of my 2021 year-long goals. I have actually made a little bit more progress on reading some of these books, which is exciting. I have now read two out of the eight classics that I wanted to read this year. My numbers on the science fiction and fantasy books I wanted to read have stayed the same. I haven't increased that at all, but I did read one more of the series completion books that I want to read, so that number has gone up slightly. So made a little bit of progress, not a ton of progress, although I have made some plans for later in the year of how I'm going to get to some of these things, so we will get there. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and actually talk about all of the books. I always like to start by talking about my DNFs. This is books that I chose for one reason or another not to finish. This month I only had one of them, and it is a book that I talked about at greater length in my mid-month wrap-up, so if you want to hear details, go there. I'm just going to say that in this case it didn't have anything to do with the quality of the book. It had more to do with some of the content that I find to be like slightly triggering, and so I, th there aren't many books that are like that for me, but this was one, and I don't think that'll be the case for everyone. I like what it's doing. I think it's doing a pretty good job of it. It just wasn't for me. Um, and this is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. I read half of it. I have a review on Goodreads and to talk about it at greater length in my mid-month wrap-up, which I will link up above if you want to check that out. Moving on to telling you about all the books that I finished that I can tell you about, uh, we're going to start with my two-star reads. First up, there's one book that I mention in my mid-month wrap-up, as well as in my reading vlog where I read a bunch of romances that I had for a review. That book is To Love and to Loathe by Martha Waters. I gave this one two stars. You can hear about it in those videos. I also gave two stars to The Widow of Rose House by Diane 
Diana Biller. This was the pick for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club, which is a book club that I'm in along with my friends Mara from Books Like Whoa, Liana from Liana's Library, and Amanda from The Naughty Librarian. We had a live show talking about this book over on Mara's channel, so I will link that if you want to hear a lot of really in-depth discussion of this book. I will just say I started off at a two and a half star and the more I thought about it and talked about it the more I decided to <laughs> lower my rating to two stars. This is a book that I just found to be really disappointing and unsatisfying. It's not a horrible book, it just had in my opinion so much more potential and there were a lot of things that I just didn't really love about it, which is unfortunate because it had a lot going for it. It's a gothic romance with a cinnamon roll hero, which is something I'm usually a huge fan of. Unfortunately, it just really didn't work for me. I thought that the hero was an odd character. It felt like she kind of smashed together bits and pieces of heroes that didn't make a what felt to me like a cohesive person, and I didn't really understand that. I didn't love the progression of their relationship. Also, this is supposed to be a gothic romance. There's literally a haunted house in here, and it was not scary or atmospheric at all. So yeah, I just found this to be really disappointing. I gave it two stars. I wasn't a huge fan. If you want to hear all the nitty gritty, check out the live stream. I also unfortunately gave two stars to What's Not to Love by Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegman Broca. I know this one is highly anticipated. It is a YA romantic comedy. Um, yeah, I just didn't like this very much. I had it for a review from NetGalley and some other reviewers seemed to be enjoying it more than I did. Set up to be like this rivals to lovers story set with high school seniors and in theory I liked the idea of that. They're both kind of overachievers and super competitive but in practice I just felt like they were so awful to each other and kind of toxic and it made it hard for me to want to actually root for them to be together. I was more like yeah, you guys need to like let this go and move on with your lives. Like go to college and find somebody else. I don't know. I just, it didn't really work for me. Um, it's not, again, like not a terrible book. I just, like I wasn't rooting for the relationship and the rest of it was just fine for me. But again, your mileage may vary on this one. It kind of depends on your taste. I'm just not a big fan of that kind of toxicity in a relationship. Things for me went too far to feel like they were in a place by the end where they were going to have a healthy relationship with each other. So two stars for me. The final book that I gave two stars to, man, I, it, it's interesting. I don't usually give out all that many low <laughs> ratings, but I feel like this year, for whatever reason, there have been more of them. But I also gave two stars to The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is another one that I just found to be very disappointing and again it's kind of a polarizing book. I feel like some people really are enjoying this and other people are not. I was not really a fan. It's loosely a reimagining of Jane Eyre as a domestic thriller set in the American South in the modern day and you know I liked the idea of it and there are definitely nods to the original story but I just, I didn't really like it very much. I really love Jane Eyre. It's one of my all-time favorite books, and I think there is a lot of potential there to tell a really interesting story in this way. I just didn't think this book really did it. As a Jane Eyre retelling, I didn't think it was super great. And as a domestic thriller, I didn't think it was super great. I really didn't like the Jane character, which I think is unfortunate because I feel like she should be more sympathetic and I, I didn't like some of the characterization choices that were made here. I also had a lot of trouble suspending disbelief with, if, if you've read this book you know what I mean, but like some of the things that happened I was like, does this really make sense though? Like. <laughs> I don't know. So I feel like it tried, but didn't really work for me. Moving on, let's talk about my three star reads. One I talked about in my mid-month wrap up, and I actually think in that video I gave it three and a half stars, and then after the live show discussion of it I ended up deciding to drop it to three, and you know this is one where, <laughs> this is a book where I feel like it has a lot of really good ideas, they just didn't really come together for me very well. I like what it's trying to do, it just, I, I don't know, and maybe later books in the series improve on that, but this first book I was like feeling 
more mediocre about. That is A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe by Alex White. This was the Patreon book club pick for March, so we did a live show discussing it, and I, I think most of us have kind of similar taste in our science fiction and had like pretty similar feelings about this book. It is very action-packed though, so I do think if you are a fan of very action-driven plots, you might enjoy this a lot more. Um, it was it was fine, like I liked pieces of it, it just as a full narrative and book it didn't quite come together for me. The other thing I gave three stars to, which I also talk about in my mid-month wrap-up, is Pretty Humans by Ruby Dixon. If you want to hear my thoughts on that one, check out that video. All right, moving on, let's talk about my three and a half star reads. This month there were three of them, and one of those I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. That book is Digital Nomads in Search of Meaningful Work in the New Economy, something like that. I don't think I got the title quite right here, but it's, it's a lengthy one, by Rachel A. Woldoff and Robert C. Litchfield. Again, that is one I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. I also ended up giving three and a half stars to The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is a book that I read for my Reading Dragon fantasy vlog. When I first finished it, I had given it four stars, but upon further reflection and discussion with others, I decided to drop it to three and a half. I think I really enjoyed the experience of reading it, but the longer I kind of get away from it, the more I feel like this for me is more of like a three and a half star read. I had a good time with it more so than I was expecting and there are things that I really like about this book but I also have some critiques of it as well. If you want to hear more detailed thoughts check out that reading vlog or stay tuned because I have an entire podcast episode on chapter 3 podcast which is linked down below if you want to check it out. We have our own YouTube channel and you can find it wherever you get your podcasts but um, I have an episode where I'm going to be discussing in depth with spoilers, Rage of Dragons, it'll be myself along with Alex Nieves and Alan from the Library of Alexandria, which should be really fun. I kind of brought us on because we had somewhat different perspectives on the book in terms of degrees of enjoyment, so I think that was a really good conversation. Tune in for that, but I gave this one three and a half stars. I will say about Rage of Dragons, even though it was three and a half stars, I am actually going to keep it. I don't always keep my three and a half star books on my bookshelf, but that one I'm going to keep. And I do plan to read the sequel because based on what I've heard, I think it might improve upon some of the things I critiqued in book one. And my final three and a half star read is a book that was sent to me for review from an indie author. This is The Hand That Takes by Taylor O'Connell, book one in the Fall of the Coward series. This is grimdark fantasy following a group of thieves and the author kindly sent me a copy for review as well as the audiobook. So this was kind of cool because I was able to do kind of a blended read of read it physically and listen to the audiobook as well and I have to say the the audiobook was fantastic. I do have some critiques of the book which we will get into but the production value like seriously it was so good. I highly recommend it. If you want to check this out highly recommend checking out the audiobook. The narrator literally okay so in this book there are little like pub songs. The narrator sings the pub songs. He like makes up tunes for them and actually sings them. It was so good. His, his narration was very very good. So um yeah. So I think the story here is really interesting. It took me a little while to acclimate myself to the world because you were dropped in kind of in the middle of the action without a whole lot of context and so it takes a while to figure out kind of who everybody is and what actually is going on but once I did I was definitely interested and invested in the story of the main character. So when the book opens the main character is on the run after a heist gone wrong and is trying to escape and so we then go back and eventually learn more about his backstory. We would learn what was this attempted heist, how did it come together, how did it go wrong, like what what were all of those things and that I thought was really interesting. It is also an interesting world. I wanted a little bit more explanation especially of the magic system because we don't really like like it's it's interesting but we never get a lot of explanation for how it works. Part of that might be the fact that we're in the head of the main character who also doesn't know much about magic but I wish we had gotten a little bit more of it. I also think if you're going into this you should probably check content warnings because there definitely are some not only for your kind of expected violence and gruesome things like yeah of course like that's gonna be in here but near the end of the book there's also a on-page sexual assault scene that takes place and attempted group sexual assault which is like 
it's, it's a lot more more intense than what you might be used to reading so do check content warnings if you need them I think this is a pretty solid debut I think he's got some interesting things happening in terms of plot in terms of world in terms of characters the writing itself is nice it's relatively easy to read once you get past kind of the beginning like you definitely do get into the narrative I, I think my one other sort of criticism is that this does fall a bit into something you see commonly in this genre especially when it's written by men which is most of the time the women on page are either sort of victims or are being objectified by our main characters and there's a lot of like body humor some of which I can excuse because given who our characters are some of that does make sense I just do wish that we had like I, like I think it would have been helpful to push back on that a bit if we had had perhaps the perspective of a female character who is like fully fleshed out and has her own goals and motivations that would have been nice to see and you know I, I hope that maybe in a future book we might get some of that there is a side character who's introduced more later in the book who seems like she could be a really interesting person to follow who's a female character so um, I feel like it has potential but it definitely does kind of fall into that trap of what you commonly see so I would just say be aware of that so I ended up giving this three and a half stars I had a pretty good time with it and uh, thank you to the author for sending me a copy all right with that said we're moving on to our four star reads this is why I really like structuring this, the videos this way because we always end on a high note <laughs> so um okay so I had a, how many four star reads did I have this month there were a bunch of them guys uh there usually are let's see we had one two so this month we had seven four star reads that I can talk about and I think four of them I have talked about in other videos in my mid-month wrap-up I talked about guards guards by Terry Pratchett I also have a really fun podcast episode up about this. I talked with Alan from the Library of Alexandria again, who is a big fan of Discworld, and we had a great conversation about Discworld and Terry Pratchett and Guards Guards in particular. This was my first Discworld book, and I definitely enjoyed it and hope to read more in the future. And in my mid-month wrap-up, I also talked about Baseball's Leading Lady, Effa Manley, and the Rise and Fall of the Negro Leagues by Andrea Williams. So check those places if you want to hear more details. I also gave four stars to Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie. This is the book that I read for a secret TBR vlog where I was reading my friend Mara from Books Like Woe's all-time favorite books. So I gave it four stars and I talk about it more in that video. And then in that romance reading vlog that I mentioned, I read An Earl, the Girl, and a Toddler by Vanessa Riley, which I really enjoyed. If you are looking for historical romance, Regency romance written by BIPOC authors, Black, Indigenous, POC authors, uh, Vanessa Riley is a great option. She writes Regency romance and I think does a great job of centering Black characters and really grappling with the complicated elements of race and colonialism during that time period and so I think she does a great job of that. The other nice thing about Vanessa Riley for those of you who prefer not to have explicit scenes in your romance she writes closed door bedroom scenes but still writes plenty of passionate chemistry between the characters when they are on page kissing and whatever so um I really enjoyed this one I gave it four stars and I do recommend checking it out I also gave four stars to Heartbeat Braves by Pamela Sanderson this was our very first book for the indigenous romance read-along where we're reading a romance written by an indigenous author every month between March and August and we had the live show for this it was great I will link that up above if you haven't seen it yet it was a really great discussion and I was joined by two really wonderful indigenous booktubers Thor Wants Another Letter and Native Lady Book Warrior and they had such great insight into this book it was really interesting and this is part of why I wanted to bring Own Voices reviewers onto the channel for these discussions because they offer a perspective that is not what I can bring you but in general I really enjoyed this it's a really sweet slow burn romance that also has a lot of social issues woven into it I would definitely read on in the series I think it's a really great indie option that I read on the recommendation of Audrey from Perpetual Pages and Jocelyn from Yogi with a book this was Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee I was able to get the audiobook from my library and it was so cute and so charming and has definitely sort of wet my appetite to read adult fiction from Yoon Ha Lee I believe they're a non-binary author who writes science fiction that has a lot of politics and a lot of like in-depth world building to it this is their middle grade book through the Rick Riordan imprint and I just thought it was so lovely it kind of blends science fiction and fantasy and includes Korean mythology including that of the Gumiho which are these kind of tricky 
fox spirits with magic and so our main character is a gumiho she can shapeshift she finds out that her older brother has supposedly deserted his post in the space military they live on another planet and she wants to go find him and save him and is sure he never would have done that so she uses her magic and her shapeshifting ability to sneak aboard ships and go have adventures in space and it was just really cute and really charming also the amount of world building for a middle grade book i have never seen anything like this for like a middle grade science fiction it's so detailed and interesting and definitely like i said has made me want to pick up some of their adult science fiction so really enjoyed it gave it four stars and the final book that i gave four stars to this month was the Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. I had this as an audio review copy from the Penguin Random House Volumes app and this was also the book pick from one of my patrons because they get entered into a raffle and whoever wins gets to pick a book from my TBR that they want me to read and review. So this was the pick and I really liked this a lot. It's interesting because I went in expecting it to be like a gothic thriller. Um, I would say that this is actually more of a isolated closed circle murder mystery than it is a thriller, uh, which might be part of why it's, it's not always hitting the right audience, but I really enjoyed it. I think it's a pretty good version of what it is. It's set at this new modern hotel that used to be a sanatorium in the Swiss Alps. And our main character is a woman who had been a police detective in the UK, but has been on administrative leave for like mental health reasons ever since she had something kind of bad happen like a year before and has been struggling with that. And she's going to this hotel for her brother's engagement party. But then the fiance goes missing and dead bodies start showing up and then there's an avalanche and so they're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in this old creepy sanatorium. I thought it was really interesting. There were a few things that were like less perfect and less believable but in general I really enjoyed this and I hope she continues on to make this a series because I feel like the way the ending is written definitely leaves that open door to make this a serialized thing following this detective and I would I would read them. I thought it was really good. So we're gonna move on and talk about my four and a half star reads. So first up in my mid-month wrap-up and my romance reading vlog I talked about The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. I gave this one four and a half stars. Then in my vlog reading Mara's favorite books I talk about All the President's Men by Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward. I did like this. I'm glad I read it. It's about the Watergate scandal and I've got to say reading it in 2021 in light of the recent Trump presidency ha it, it hit different. It was... <laughs> This is very interesting. You can for sure see some parallels and um, yeah, it was fascinating. I don't know that I would have picked this up if it weren't for this project, but I think it, you know, it's a classic piece of journalism and I'm glad I read it. And the final book that I gave four and a half stars to in March was In the Hand of the Goddess by Tamora Pierce. This is book two in the Song of the Lioness series. I'm doing so many read-alongs and vlogs like I've <laughs> it's been such a busy month you see why I've read so much um, but this is for the Song of the Lioness read-along that I'm doing with Ashley from Bookish Realm so we had a live show talking about this again in really great detail so I'm going to point you there if you want to hear all of the thoughts but in general I really enjoyed this this was a reread for me it's one of my all-time favorite series has been since I was a kid and I had fun rereading this I had forgotten how much happens in this book like a lot happens in this book and um, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as the first book I think it has some kind of pacing issues like I think it it things happen a little too quickly sometimes but I still really loved it and I also have this nostalgia factor so for me this was four and a half stars we're gonna talk about my five star reads. I had a bunch of them this month. There were so many great books that I read this month. It was really awesome. And I've like, it's just been, it's been a lot. Okay, first up, let's talk about the books that I gave five stars to that I read for reading vlogs. First up, for my reading vlog where I read books about dragons, it was incredibly successful. Honestly, I didn't expect to like everything as much as I did, but I gave three out of the four books in that five stars. And one of them I like, I've been on the fence about whether to make it a six star favorite of the year. For now, I'm staying at five stars. I probably feel particular, I, I probably am being more conservative with it because it was a sponsored video. And I'm like, 
is it weird to make that one of my favorite books but I did really love it so maybe maybe I'll change my mind we'll see anyway the book that I'm talking about with regards to the sponsorship is Fireborn by Rosaria Munda I have to say I loved this <laughs> like I this was so my jam I'm really into political fantasy and the way that the politics in this book is done is so interesting it's inspired by the Aeneid and Plato's Republic <laughs> I like live for that stuff I it was it was great I loved this a whole lot it was very very good um I also gave five stars to Given by Nandi Taylor I have since come to realize this is a very controversial opinion like the ratings on Goodreads for this book are not very high I really liked it a lot I think it's a good book I think a lot of the stuff that she's trying to do in terms of talking about immigration is great and I liked the romance that I didn't think I would and you kind of see that in the vlog where at the beginning I'm like okay, I really like the heroine, but the hero sucks. How are you going to make me root for them? And for me, it worked. By the end, I liked it. And I think that the intention of this is to see a growth arc of somebody kind of coming out of toxic masculinity. And plus it's a dragon shifter romance, which is fun. So I liked it. I like what it's doing. I gave it five stars. I realize this may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I, I think it's worth a try if this sounds up your alley. And then for a very fun tongue-in-cheek book, I also gave five stars to Princess Florinda and the Forty Flight Tower by Tamsin Muir. This, like, this was just totally my sense of humor. I really like Tamsin Muir's writing, and this was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, that was like a that was a super successful reading project. Then for the video where I read Mara's favorite books. I gave five stars to The Obsession by Nora Roberts. This was my very first Nora Roberts and I don't think it will be my last. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, it's a it's an odd book because it's a very slow burn romance that feels super cozy even though it's also about serial killers and you wouldn't think you could have a cozy book about serial killers but somehow that's what this book is. I really liked it. And then for my romance reading vlog, I gave five stars to Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I love Talia Hibbert. She is an autobi author for me at this point. Her romance totally works for me. I love the way she does diversity and representation. I love her sense of humor. I love the romances she writes. They just are everything that I want them to be and this was no different definitely a five-star read I loved it and then it looks it looks like all the rest of the books I gave five stars to I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up I told you it's a weird month because I've talked about most of these books in other places which is it's it's a little bit strange um and yet I still feel like this wrap-up is gonna be really long <laughs> it's fine Okay, so books I gave five stars to that I talked about in depth in my mid-month wrap-up. We had a nonfiction title, Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. I read this on the recommendation of Ashley from Bookish Realm and highly recommend. It was fascinating. And in case you're not already following me on Goodreads, my Goodreads is linked down below and I do write in-depth reviews for all of the books that I read. So if you ever want to hear more thoughts, you can check it out there. In that video, I also talked about Caressed by Ice by Nalini Singh. This is my favorite book in the Psy Changeling series and this was a reread. This was one of my favorite books of 2020 and uh, it was it was still just as good reading it again. It's just that books that I'm rereading don't aren't eligible to get six stars or be a favorite of the year. And exciting thing, I reread this in preparation for talking with Mara at Books Like Woe for her podcast. She runs a podcast called Changeling Cast where she is going through and doing a deep dive sequentially into each of the books in the series. And so we had a really cool conversation about this one. So I will link that down below if you guys want to go check it out. And then my final five star read, which I did talk about in my mid month wrap up is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden, the sequel to The Bear and the Nightingale. This was a buddy read with Leanna from Leanna's Library and both of us thoroughly enjoyed it. We are planning on reading the final book in the trilogy next month, I think. So that should be fun. Or maybe May, maybe we're doing it in May. We're reading a lot of stuff. So we'll see but um yeah this was great lastly we are down to my two favorite books that I read in March both of them I gave six stars which means they are among my favorite books I've read all year perhaps a favorite of all time and uh what's interesting is both of these are books that I read for that vlog where I was reading Mara's favorite books 
which was kind of great and I think proved the point I was trying to make with that video which was hey look we're good friends we have a lot of overlap and favorites I already like a lot of your favorite books maybe I'll find some new faves just by reading the ones that I hadn't read yet and clearly that worked because I found two of them so first up we have The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter I really liked this a lot they're dark feminist retellings of fairy tales they they do get quite dark but they're so smart and so interesting the writing is just beautiful and the number of like literary references that she has in these is fascinating um yeah i talk about this in more depth in the reading vlog but i really really love this definitely one of my favorite things i've read this year and then i would say probably my absolute favorite thing that i read in march was the remains of the day by kazuo ishiguro this is not going to be everybody's cup of tea because it's very slow paced and it's very character driven like it's entirely character driven so if you don't like that <laughs> you'll probably find this book really boring but i loved it the writing was so beautiful and i just it made me very emotional honestly i loved this and it makes me definitely want to read more from kazuo ishiguro if this is any indication of what he's able to do. This book is kind of following the reflections of a British butler at the end of his career where the world around him has dramatically changed and he is reflecting on his life, on the choices he made, whether they were good or bad, what he missed out on, what he did right, what he did wrong, and it's just like slow paced and introspective and beautiful and I loved it so much um so definitely my favorite thing that i read this month for sure one of my favorite books i've read this year and i'm so happy that that project got me to finally read it those are all of the things that i read in the month of march um it, it was an interesting reading month because i think i had some very high highs and some pretty low lows <laughs> you know um and then you know plenty of stuff in between but there were for sure some standouts and some great things i read i was able to get to a lot of things that i had been meaning to read for quite a while which was nice and i i just you know i i read a lot of i read a lot of stuff for this judging thing looking forward to april i suspect i said this last month so maybe don't take me at my word but <laughs> i suspect that i will read less in april than i read this month but I said that in February, I, I, I just keep reading so much. I just want to read all the things. It's a problem, like book nerd problems, especially when you read more than one or two genres. I want to read all the things, um, but one has to choose. So talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of the books that I talked about in this video today. And for your question of the day, what should we say? Um, okay, you know what? For your question of the day, what is your preferred mode of reading? Are you an audiobook listener, ebook reader, physical book reader? What what is your preference? Because I know for me it's definitely changed over time, especially since having kids. I now do a lot more ebooks and audiobooks than I ever used to. I never used to listen to audiobooks almost at all, and I didn't really like reading ebooks. I enjoy sitting down and getting cozy with a physical book, but unfortunately as a parent, I have not as much time to be able to do that as I used to, so I've come to appreciate all of these other forms of reading. But let me know in the comments down below what's your preferred mode or what are your preferred modes of reading. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon link down below or check out channel memberships if you want to get a sneak peek at all of my upcoming video projects. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.